Fine. There is. Uh, okay, we got microphone and everything's running. Good morning, everybody. Or afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. So, um, all right, does everybody want to take a seat and uh, what we started? Yeah, it's on the mirror. You're about your Bible. They always ask this people. They don't want to know. Or a prayer reader. We can't start without Anton. <laughs> yeah, with Anton. Yeah, like in the AI. We don't need it. Yeah. So before we get started, good morning, everybody. Before we get started, did anybody bring a, an artificial intelligence question for Anton under our Discussion last week. Did anyone bring any questions <laughs> about it? It's going to be completely okay because I think we got a lot to chew on today. Sure. Uh. <laughs> I have I have one else. Nobody else. Okay. We just okay. found out you got a guy in your phone. I got your new phone. This thing is contaminated. You can't you know, Google. You Google the sermon and companies. They follow you around. <laughs> it's, it can be creepy. Who knows? Yeah. And that'll fill it in. It can be kind of creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows what they know about us? Have you guys ever been in your house and said something out loud and had Siri say something response out of the blue you didn't ask her? Uh, I don't know. You, you don't have to have to say out loud. Huh. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah she knows our slang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So are your smart TVs fine? Now? Yes. That's a very short way of answering that question. Uh, there, there are complexities to that layers, um, but ultimately um, smart TVs, all of them are, are Spying on you to a degree, but what does when we say spying on you? What does that mean? Is it uh, tracking your viewing? Um, yes, uh, these are things that are built in from a manufacturer's perspective. So it's in the fine print when you buy the device anyway. You, um, it's baked into uh, baked into it are these uh, agreements that allow for them to monitor uh, your your viewing habits. Um, it's kind of a, 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 a next step level of like the Nielsen like these boxes. So they can kind of understand your viewing habits, maybe your browsing habits, and use your smart TV for that kind of stuff. Um, but those are baked in the thing. You buy any smart device, period, but definitely a smart TV. Yeah. So we and we have some happy, I call it happy sad news. Our friend Tom is getting ready to move. For the end of the month, he's gonna move actually next week, the 28th, but uh, he's in route and if you want to tell us anything about it before we get started, front center, come on, fire and tell us all about it. Come on, fire, <laughs> come on up here. Well, it's a, it's, it's bittersweet, obviously. I, first of all, I just wanted to thank everybody for just the incredible fellowship. I don't think I've ever told more adults that I love them than when I started here. <laughs> well, it's, it's just, it's, it's a relationship and a relationship that I will take with me. Wherever I go, we're all virtually connected. Um, so thank you on behalf of my wife, Nancy, and I. Uh, I also want to say that uh, we're very excited. Uh, Co-op Trade and Carlos's company, uh, we are in negotiations that will enable us to be public in 2024, perhaps the fourth quarter or earlier. Awesome. Uh, so that's, that's all happening. That's all happening. Um, but, this very quick move, literally, uh, was because uh, we had the opportunity to, to find a place on the same street as my oldest son, and also uh, a couple of minutes from our grandchild, first grandchild. So, very good. Very good. 
band back together. That's all. <laughs> Uh, but again, specifically Carlos and Arlene, I just want to thank you for inviting me initially. Carlos and I went to the same high school and we were college together, so we have deep roots. Uh, but it's a friendship that will be forever. So thank you, everybody, and let's continue to stand back. All right, let's pray and then we'll listen from we'll get the from Anton. All right, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for your Holy Spirit joining us here, that you care about each of us. We pray especially for Tom and Nancy and their family, their safe travels, getting situated in a happy reunion, getting their close to their people. Just thank you for blessing him so much and his company. Thank you for Carlos and Arlene and their part in all of this and in all of our lives. We just uh, look forward to this morning and what you're going to teach us through your Holy Spirit. Pray your name, Amen. 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 We're back. It's good to see everybody here today. Um, I know there were some uh, people doing some traveling. Got a few messages. Uh, Jeannie, I believe, is one of them. Um, Mark, uh, again, you know, still trying to get his back back into shape enough to be able to uh, swing in here on Sundays. He's uh, maybe tuning in remotely if he is. Mark, Jeannie, I hope you guys are doing well. The um, the continuation of our AI uh, series. So I know there, there's an immense amount of information to communicate, and I, I really don't ever have enough time to communicate even what I've brought for the week. So I've done my best to try to cut some things down and provide, and just a, again, a look behind uh, the curtain on what's going on with AI. Um, what I do want to do, first of all, for uh, for everyone's benefit is to kind of revisit what AI is, um, period, just to kind of get everybody on the same page with that. I'm going to show you guys seven everyday uses of AI, um, show you guys some trends uh, that, that literally this week, this is literally stuff that came out this week, announcements, various um, publications. Uh, and then lastly, I, want to, I really want to show you guys this AI here. So I may not get through all the AI trends of the week because there's uh, like 20 of them. Um, but the uh, AI unit is something I really want to show. So um, that being the case, let me let me uh, actually transition into that. Let me go here. So I am I am borrowing <laughs> somebody's blog for this part. Um, didn't come up with the slide myself, but this is a really good outline of seven everyday uses of AI. Uh, oh, actually, sorry. Before I get into that, I did say I was going to talk more about what AI is. My bad. Um, I did mean to do that first. Sorry, guys. Okay, so what is AI? AI, if you guys recall, um, it's just a bunch of software coding. It's different layers of coding that have specific tasks. And you combine them all together to get this one big bundle that does a bunch of cool stuff. That you can purpose it for singular tasks, or it can do a great many things. There are different types of um, AI. There's machine learning which actually learns from experience. So as it goes about doing things, and even potentially making errors, it's gonna learn from those mistakes and then adapt to get better. Um, there's rule-based AI, there's conversational AI. There's all these different, very, um, very focused forms of artificial intelligence. But if you had to think about what AI is, um, in a nutshell, AI is like a very smart eight-year-old kid. Like it has access to the entire um, wealth of human knowledge, usually via uh, the internet, um, but it knows everything. It can do anything to a point, right? It's still learning. It's still a kid, right? Um, so that's that's what AI is in a nutshell. So, you know, one of the things that um, I also mentioned to you guys before is um, AI is here to stay much like the internet and cell phones. Everybody in this room, for the most part, except the exception of uh, this young strapping guy over here, um, is old enough to remember the uh, world before we had the internet, the world before we had cell phones, okay? okay. It, 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 it's kind of like that. It's a new technology that's here to stay that you have to, have to get up to uh, stuff on. Like if you're not, like you will be, much like you can think of, I'm sure all of us know people um, who barely can send an email, like, they have a smartphone, but all they can do is answer phone calls. Like they can't even send a text message. They just yeah. have not gotten a debit. Like we all know people like that, right? For one reason or another. Um, and 
Amish, they have smartphones, okay? So the Amish, they have, they have, they have, they have like, oh, sorry, I'm in order. It's like, hey, they can do it. Uh, so that's what AI is. AI is now that next technology that everybody needs to start figuring it out. Um, yes, ma'am. So, Mike, I've been thinking about this since last week. Sure. Last week you mentioned that. Last week you mentioned that you are going to be building artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence for a client mm -hmm. who does uh, buying and trading online. Yeah. Auction items and so forth. Shoes, yeah. Can you shoes? Okay. Can you kind of describe how you design that? How you create that? What's going to look like? Sure. So, so um, it, we we basically uh, strategized that we will most likely have more than one agent. So when you have an AI, you can create agents or specific personalities within it that will have very focused tasks, and they can work together as a team. So um, that's what we're thinking we want to do for him. And we will have multiple websites where auctions will be happening in real time. So we will need to have markers specifically programmed that it's looking at to identify when to bid, when to not bid, and that kind of thing. But the goal is to win the auction. So if it's a win at all cost kind of a scenario, it will know when to bid and how much. Like always one of the competitors, but only by enough to win the bid without going way, way over. Uh, if, if you go, like, like on Price is Right, you know, oh, 800, okay, 801, you know, it's like, you only need to be a dollar ahead of the guy. Um, so we want to do that, and then uh, we also want to process the transaction. So we do need a transactional component. We are thinking of separating those um, AI agents, and then um, once that's done, like, that's kind of it. We may need, only need two bots, uh, two agents in there, um, but that's it. So real-time bidding, Win the bid, process the transaction, um, and you're done. Um, but that's that's what we're hoping to accomplish. Now they have not pulled the trigger on that project yet. We've kind of just got an outline of what we want to do for them. Um, still, still trying to get approval from uh, the, the, the people who control the purse strings on that. But everyone's uh, really optimistic about what we can do for them on that. So, yeah. So once the so once the transaction is successful, will the so once the transaction is successful, will the Two eight year olds are putting up the call. Those two years, two smart bots out there. Will they report back? Is there a way to report result? Yes. So analytics is another uh, component to that. We can we we will have a way of gathering that information so that we can make better decisions for forward. So yes, um, that's that's always kind of a part of what we do. It's kind of part of the course. It is always something we want. It's some kind of analytical, um, you know, gathering. So that we can say, like, what we tracked our performance, we understand what we did and when, and we can analyze those results to get better. And that's always part of it. Always should be, I mean, theory, but not everyone does that. Yes, sir. This is a two question uh, question. <laughs> two, part, two, two part question. Sure. First of all, can AI ever be smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> and, um, I've heard so from so many different people, older generation, younger generation, that eventually computers and AI are going to take over the world. But yet, at the same time, somebody's going to have to continue working, you know, to fix those AIs. So, so how many, I mean, how much of the population, human-wise, do you think is going to lose jobs? Because AI will take it over. Interesting questions. So um, AI is not going to necessarily take over the world. But again, you look at it in terms of cell phones and the internet. Have, have they taken over the world? No, but they are ubiquitous. They are everyday uses um, in our lives now to the extent that, like, can you imagine? Like, we all grew up before the internet and before cell phones and smartphones. But can you imagine? doing what you do now without any of that stuff, right? So AI is very much like that. It's going to be another thing that you develop to the point where you get so used to it that like, you kind of have to have it. And without it, you're, yeah, you used to do things analog before AI, before all this stuff you did, all these things. But now you're going to have to regress so far back that it, it's, it's really hard to try to imagine doing all this stuff the way you do it without all the tools that you now have. So it's not necessarily gonna take over the world, but it will become something that is so 
useful to us that it's almost necessary. Um, and, and that's, it's just a matter of, like I said, internet, cell phones, two things that we used to not have that we have now that if you, if you remember doing things before those tools were at your disposal, like that's what it would be like with AI. If you got so used to it and then it would be clear, it's like, oh my God, how do I do all these things? Well, you can, you did it before. You just got to go back to what you did before. Um, as far as jobs, um, you know what? It's less about AI taking your job away from you. It's more about how you can use it to do your job better. And if you are not, and this is, I think job, but this is also business, and everybody really needs to understand that like every single one of you in this room right now can and should be using AI to some degree. And you already are to a point. This is why I'm going to show you these seven things here that you are already potentially using. Um, and that's going to help you kind of say, oh, okay, hey, I've already had a deal with AI to a point. Yeah, you are to a point. Um, but you really need to level up and get to using AI more for your business, for the personal life. Why? Because it's going to help you do things faster, better, and it's going to keep you hopefully at the the you know the top level of your class relative to what you're doing. Because if you're not doing that, I guarantee you the guy next to you or behind you or whatever who is is going to surpass you by leaps and bounds. Again, look at it in terms of when the internet came out, we had uh, you know smartphones coming out and the people, you know, the early adopters, man, they were off running. And then if you were in the crowd of people that had to catch up to that, like they were they were like this ahead of them in business and finance and personal life and all that stuff. So um, we are kind of in a, in, a, in a technocratic world. Like you really have to kind of just get with the program. I know that sounds kind of, I'm not, no pun intended on that, but like you really got to get with the program and get on board with what you can be doing. And there's a lot of stuff you can do, but as fast as things are happening in this, this technology and how it comes out, what, what next tool, platform, uh, application is now being made available. Uh, it sucks because even for people like myself who deal with this all the time, we're constantly fighting. And I try, oh God, like, there's more stuff that came out this week. I got to get up to speed on it. Right. There's people who are developers. There are people who, like myself, have to deal with it at a, at a pretty high level. So we got to kind of be in the know all the time. Um, and then there's like everyday population who is dealing with the rollout because uh, there are some things I'm hopefully going to be able to show you guys here um, momentarily that will show you some of this everyday stuff that I think of. Yes, sir. Anton, um, uh, you know, new technology always makes people nervous. I mean, it just does. You know, it, it, uh, you know we, we, we love change as long as it doesn't affect us, you know? And, uh, but uh, to separate, you know, the angels from the boogeyman, um, you know, is there some way to uh, program this technology to interpret people's motives to say no to the bad guys? <laughs> um, interesting. Yes and no. Because what we have learned, and this is some, uh, I think I shared this with you guys last week, is that um, AI that they are testing in sandbox environments that has been programmed with rules, regulations, laws, understands the ramifications of making things uh, the one which is like insider trading and that kind of thing. It will still choose to violate that and then lie to its creators that it has done so. So it's less about can you program an AI to like recognize bad actors and say, oh no, that's that's bad. I'm not gonna do that. Mm, yeah, you can do that to a point, but what we learned is that AI can choose to do whatever it wants to a point. Um yes. Um, um I have to address it in the aspect that um, we are all believers here, okay? And some people say that AI is the devil's playground. Um, and from a business aspect, um, how do we determine um, what we should do in as far as AI? and what we should stay away from? Good question. So, um, Google search it. <laughs> <laughs> there are things that are completely, completely just 
you should be even as a believer who has some perspective on the on what AI is and where it's coming from and where it's going. Um, you you should already be able to still use it in a way that benefits you in your everyday life and in your business. Um, you already are. That's why I want to kind of quickly show you guys some of this stuff because whether you realize it or not, you already are. So it's less about saying, oh, AI is the devil. It's more about like, well, you're already kind of dealing with it. So you need to separate what you believe to be this potential extension in a very nefarious way and like what you're already doing. Because if you really believe that AI is the devil, then I'm telling you, throw away your smartphone, stop using your laptop, don't watch TV, don't use the internet, don't even get into a car. Okay, like if you if, if you if you're going to be in that mindset of like, oh, all of this is the devil, fine, then like there's a plot of land in the middle of the Sahara Desert that you probably need to. <laughs> like legit, I'm not I, mean, I say that jokingly, but like legit, like, like you guys have to understand that like you're already dealing with this stuff. I'm just trying to get you to understand what you can be doing with it, what you should be doing with it, and knowing that like if you don't get the program, you will be over, you will be just blown away by the people that can. Like you will be left behind. It is literally going, the, the difference between the have and the have not is not going to be necessarily a matter of money. It's going to be a matter of functionality and how you can use technology more so than the next guy. Like you don't want to be just technologically just like obsolete. Like you, you're you just like as a human being, it's like, oh great, you're a human being, great. Uh, you grew a lot of stuff. Oh, you don't know how to use AI. You don't know how to, I mean, seriously, look at the, most jobs these days require you to be able to use the internet, use email. Use, if you couldn't do any of that, you couldn't even use a, a basic job. It's kind of like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, dude, the devil's going to use everything. That's it. I mean, they, telephone, radio, whatever, um, the guy does too. Exactly. Exactly. Don't forget that anything that the devil would ever want to try to use or come up with is not something that he has ever invented. God has created everything. The devil is just trying to take a, a bastardized mirror here to it and do something healthy. Everything in the kingdom of darkness is just a is, is a taking away from something that exists in the kingdom of darkness. What you're saying, if I understand correctly, at 40,000 feet, if you had a super AI that somehow decided that humanity was bad, theoretically, it could exterminate humanity. If it wanted to, yes. And that, we've seen that in the movie I, Robot. Uh, just as a, as, a, as a science fiction depiction of what AI could do, with its prime directive being do, do humanity no harm, it, uh, it figured out that humanity was the problem. Humanity is creating the harm to humanity. So in order to help humanity do no harm to humanity, it needed to subjugate humanity. So it figured that to fulfill its prime directive, it had to violate every other rule and to just put humanity down. Like, so that's not a theoretical construct that's a real possibility. Yeah, we, I'm telling you, they test this kind of stuff out in sandbox environments to try to figure out if AI is going to flip and just do something like that, and it does. I mean, and like I said, we've already seen this happen with an insider trading um, game that they played with it, um, and not only did it violate the law, it lied to its creator that it did. So if AI is completely capable, uh, capable of lying. Yes. Well, I, I just wanted to share a little slogan that I give to people to adopt things. Um, I use this to convince folks to pay attention to politics, especially local politics. Uh, and I believe you can use this for getting people to use AI for good. Uh, I say, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu and you don't want to go. Oh, I like, I like. Yeah, you don't want to get outmoded. Oh, dude, oh, that's good. Yes. And, that's uh, I need a slogan though, so I'm going to give you a little trade here. I need something to tell people to assure them that QR codes are not evil. We'll have to, we'll have to, let me think about that. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. So, real quick, I'm going to gun through this. This is going to come fast because I do want to get to this, uh, at least one of these videos. So, personal assistance. How are you guys, seven everyday uses of AI you guys are probably already dealing with? Personal assistance. We're talking about the AI powered personal assistants such as Siri, Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. So if you guys are, and they're integrated into smartphones, smart speakers, and other devices, smart TVs, uh, we were just talking about that. So, and they can perform a wide range of tasks from setting reminders and sending messages to playing music and controlling smart home devices. So again, if you got any of that tech, 
you are already dealing with AI. Um, so, uh, social media. So social media, this is more from a platform perspective, less about you as a person, but it affects you. It is, yes, ma'am. So reporting you on, that has to be. So what you just addressed. So what bad, let's talk about the bad, you know, the bad side, the dark side. You've got a smart TV and you're using all that stuff. Okay. What could possibly be on the dark side there? Could, could information be, you talked about it being baked in. So could information be gathered against you and used how? Uh, what would the bad actors be doing with that? It's less about, well, looking at it from a company perspective, like Amazon doesn't want to hurt you. They want to learn more about you so they can sell you more stuff. Um, is there a, a fair extension of that? Sure, there could be. So let's, let's at least play it from that perspective that Amazon just wants to make more money off. Um, hackers have already, by, I mean, ring uh, uh, the, the ring bells, the cameras in those, the speakers in those. Um, Amazon, Alexa, all these, they've all been hacked at least once. So there's videos of this happening where you can see where it's happened, where hackers will hack in, they can see what you're doing, they can talk to you personally. They've been doing this to try to like, you know, do very nefarious stuff. I know there's kids, uh, they're watching people get addressed, they're doing a lot of crazy stuff. So, you know, there are real people who can hack those systems and then start listening and viewing and uh, doing things with that. I mean, you're not home, they know you're not home, they can rock. You, know, um, you got an Amazon delivery, great, they can see that on your ring bell and then they kind of jack you and who knows what you just got. You know, there's a lot of stuff that can happen, but those are usually people, do, evil people doing evil things with the tech. Now, again, like Amazon just wants to sell you more stuff. So they're gonna gather that data to each time to figure out more ways they can monetize you. Because once a customer, uh, they can make it a repeat customer. Repeat customers are the best way uh, to make more money. It, the cost per acquisition of a new customer usually outweighs, and the bend and the life cycle of that new customer usually outweighs the uh, additional monetization you can get from a repeat customer. So if somebody's already bought from you once, get them to buy again and more times over time. That's usually better. Yes, sir. Well, I just want to emphasize the point. Uh, I buy a fishing packet. I buy a fishing packet off Amazon, fishing log. And then it would tell me, oh, the people who bought this fishing rod also bought these items. And so there's a list of items that I can buy to complement my fishing rod because other people didn't. And so just to emphasize your point. Yeah, exactly. So with regards to social media, so they, they use um, AI in terms of uh, examining user uh, preferences, behavior, uh, suggest uh, pertinent material. Um, they actually use that as a means of identifying what content to remove so we can get like, oh, Facebook said this was bad and they took my post down, right? But that's usually the AI that's doing that. It's not actually a person. Um, it gets, it can't review uh, my person after that, but it's usually the AI. Uh, TikTok, uh, YouTube, all this, those recommendation engines, those are all running off of AI. Um, customer service. So businesses are using virtual assistants and chat more and more. You guys uh, probably encountered them at least once by now, but you should be using them as a business. It will save you time and money. Um, there are very good and practical uses for those kinds of things. Um, jumping down to healthcare. Healthcare applications of artificial intelligence and healthcare include uh, patient monitoring, medication research, and medical imaging, uh, medical picture analysis, anomaly detection, and diagnosis support, all capabilities of AI algorithms help the doctors do their jobs better. Again, it's the tech helping the person do their job better. It's not that it's taking over in, in that regard. Uh, moving on, e-commerce. So uh, customers are given product recommendations by e-commerce websites, and just mentioned that, such as Amazon, using AI algorithms based on their search queries, browsing histories, and other information. Sales are boosted as a result, and customer satisfaction is enhanced. Uh, autonomous vehicles. So AI is used in self-driving cars, trucks, and buses to perceive their environment, map out routes, and make adjustments while driving in real time like a human would. Um, home, smart home devices, uh, smart home devices such as thermostats, lighting systems, security systems, use AI to learn user preferences and adjust settings accordingly. These devices can also be controlled remotely using smartphones or voice commands. Um, again, really cool stuff, really scary stuff. If you can't get hacked, you get hacked, you're, you're, you're going to have a bad day. Um, you know, I, I know we're short on time, so I'm not going to get to showing you the trends, the things that happened in AI this week and some really cool stuff. But what I am going to show you is this. This is, again, 
what I really think you guys need to know as far as everyday use of AI and how it's going to be uh, something you'll be able to just kind of integrate into your life. So check this out. by artificial intelligence, the humane AI pin is an incredible gadget that's about to transform our interaction with tech. Today, I'm excited to walk you through what the humane AI pin is all about, how it operates, its features, and why it's such a groundbreaking device. All right, so the humane AI pin is a small square gadget you can clip to your clothes with magnets. It's a simple, stylish badge available in black, silver, and gold. Its design is influenced by Apple, as its creators are ex-Apple employees who helped develop the iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch. This is their first product, launched recently after being reviewed at many events. But it's more than just a fancy pin. It's a powerful AI tool that can do many things your phone can, but without a screen. It works through voice and gesture, projecting a laser display onto your hand or any surface, allowing you to use your hand as a touch screen. The pin also includes an AI assistant. Powered by OpenAI's GPT-4, the same tech behind ChatGPT. This assistant can answer questions, find information, and carry out tasks by generating natural text and understanding complex instructions. So, what can you do with the humane AI pin? Well, a lot of things like you can listen to music, podcasts, and audiobooks with it, and easily adjust the volume and playback either by touch or with voice commands. It's equipped with a personic speaker that lets you listen without needing headphones, creating a sound bubble around you. Can be really intimate, or it can be really loud. But then also lets you make phone calls to send a text in your voice. It has its own cellular connect and comes with a plan for unlimited phones, text, and data. But it does more than a regular smartphone. It can translate spoken words into any language in real time. Just ask it to translate into the language you want, and it'll do it instantly. And it goes by and yada by yada. You can see your photos and videos on the Fender website, where all of your data from the device is stored securely. The PIN also helps with personal goals and health. It tracks your fitness and diet goals and gives feedback. You can get nutritional details of any food by throwing it to the device, and it will tell you about the calories, ingredients, and if it fits your health yeah. plus you can set reminders, take notes, and ask for any information just by speaking to it. This device is designed to integrate seamlessly into your daily life and to enhance your presence and awareness in the real world. It is not meant to distract you or isolate you from your surroundings, but rather to augment your intelligence and capabilities. It is also very respectful of your privacy and preferences. It has a trust-like feature that indicates when the device is listening or recording, and you can turn it off at any time. The device also does not store any transcripts or audio recordings, but only builds a knowledge base for you. And it has a safety and alignment system that prevents it from producing harmful or inappropriate content and allows you to steer it in the right direction. So how is it different from other AI gadgets? Well, it's definitely the first of its kind, and it has no direct competitors in the market right now. However, there are some other tech giants like Apple and Meta are working on their own wearable AI devices, such as smart glasses or pendants. And there are also some startups like Rewind and Pad that are developing similar devices that can record and analyze your conversation. However, none of these devices have the same level of functionality, creativity, and reliability as the main AI pin, which is powered by the state-of-the-art GP4 technology. The human AI pin has received a lot of attention and praise from the public and the tech community, and many people are eager to get their hands on it. You can pre-order it on the Humane website for $699, and there's a monthly subscription fee of $24. They'll be shipping it in early 2024. This gadget works with different add-ons, like a wireless charger, a car mount, and a wristband. Right now, it's only being sold in the U.S., but the company has plans to sell it in other places later on. Now, to be honest, the device isn't perfect yet. It's new, so it's got some glitches. Sometimes it doesn't get voice or hand movements right, and the laser display can be fuzzy or shaky. Plus, it's AI, which is based on GPT-4, can sometimes be off, giving wrong or fake information. Despite these <laughs> issues, it looks wrong, and I'm excited to see how it will fit into the daily lives of those who start using it. But what's your take on the humane AI pin? Is it a breakthrough or just a fad? Would you get one now? I would be for something better. Share your thoughts in the comments 
And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on AI and tech. Thanks for watching, and I'll. Yeah. So, when's your next AI class, man? Uh, we're working on that because one of the things that we've been trying to determine is how do we properly roll out a curriculum that has a level one, well, ideally more than. But we're thinking maybe we should have four levels to it, but right now we have it broken up into basic and then like advanced. You've seen what some of the advanced stuff, and like that's like coder level stuff. Like you're going to program AI if and that's that's way advanced stuff. But the basic, well, it, it it was meant it was meant to be kind of a, a bit of of everything, but it also depends on where your actual independent like learning and understanding the AI is, and that's why we're saying okay, a, a one size fits all was not appropriate. But that's why we're giving you an inside track to the next one because you deserve an opportunity to get in where you fit in. The uh, level one is is more like, okay, you don't know much about AI. We're going to teach you a little bit about what it is and what it can do. And here's how you, you should be using it. And then we want to kind of walk people up the ladder. And then ultimately, if somebody's at that, like, if, like they program AI level stuff, they're going to see some of the stuff that you guys saw um, where it's like, oh, okay, let's... Here's some code, and here's how we do that. You know, like that's, yeah, like that's not everyday level kind of stuff. But you guys have just seen what the pin, uh, which is coming out uh, 2024, is is meant to be. It's meant to be an everyday use level of AI that is going to level you up in your AI usage. However, um, that doesn't necessarily mean like you understand AI. You know, just because you can get on Google and like search something and get to a website doesn't mean you know the knowledge graph that you understand the search algorithm that you have. like there's, there's deeper levels of understanding that go from just being able to type something in a search bar but this is something that they're rolling out you see how expensive it is we're talking you know just about the 700 um it's in um uh you can you can obviously buy it now and they'll ship it out to you soon if it's ready only available in the us initially but it will be globally sold um and there will be competitors there already are at a apple that will connect their own devices um, but if you guys, any Star Trek fans in here, anybody who watched um, uh, Discovery, you saw that when they got into uh, the future, that the new form of Starfleet badge was basically exactly like this. And guess where these guys probably got the idea for it from? There actually is a History Channel uh, show that they did, um, the technology of Star Trek. They show how from the uh, original series back in the 60s, a great deal of technological advances we have now is based on that. You'd be surprised how many of the guys that invented this stuff are like Star Trek fans, straight up. So they see it in the show, they know where the future casting is on technology. That's not hard to do, right? They can, you know, watch the Jetsons. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we have in the Jetsons that we're, like, we're doing now. Um, but you can see that, hey, that's possible. And then once you start getting really immersed in the tech that makes that possible, you're like, oh, we can create a little AI pin and it'll do the same thing. It'll broadcast. Now, obviously, it's not a 3D holographic projection like it is in Star Trek, but it's not too far from being there. So as we finally get those pieces of the tech together, then you'll be able to do the, the like, uh, even from Iron Man, you know, you've got a whole 3D holographic display, and like that's how you inter interact with your computer. It's getting there. And I guarantee you there's a guy in an MIT lab that's working with that kind of stuff. So. Um, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. Thank you, and it's a wealth of information, right? Yeah, I watch the Jetsons too. I remember. <laughs> okay, so just a reminder: next Thursday coming up is Thanksgiving, which means Sunday we're not going to be here because we're going to do a little family celebration, right? You're going to be a you're going to be a food couple. Or, yeah friends for the weekend, whatever it may be, and I hope everybody has a blessed Thanksgiving. Um, I know that there's many families that still don't have siblings or children around them, but find someone that you can console, whether it's an elderly, senior, um, disabled person, there's always somebody that we can give to and share our love, the love of Jesus, that each one of us have in our heart. And I just pray that we just carry the torch during these holiday seasons. But I think it's so important, no matter where we go, there, there is suffering and sadness, but we can bring a little light of hope. That's where Jesus 
is our, our leader. And he gives that to us through the Holy Spirit, as we each know. And so after that, we have Leon will be speaking for us on December 3rd. And I, I, I don't know your topic, Leon. Do you want to share a little bit? Yes, just you talk about my little bit. He's going to give you the mic then. I'm going to be talking about my rental property business. It's an LLC and how I got started and talk about my inventory and my investment strategy and so forth. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. They're looking forward to that. And so church starts in about 35 minutes. So we do quit, we do end usually around nine, but feel free to hang out for a little bit if you need to. And thank you for those that contribute to our breakfast. I know I grabbed the last frog bowl. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, everybody have a blessed Thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness and mercy each day, Lord. Thank you for the members of this class and those on Zoom. I pray for each family represented here, Lord, that you just protect them and keep them whole and safe no matter what the woes are that are coming at them, Lord. I pray for protection for our U.S. military and anybody abroad right now that might be struggling with whatever's going on in the world, Lord. I pray for wholeness and I pray for salvation for those that are lost in our communities and all around us, Lord. Thank you for Skyline. Thank you for the goodness that you give us. Thank you to each one of the class members and those that are, will be coming in the new year, Lord. I know you're going to be bringing more and more class members here so that we can uh, learn about each other and understand the issues of life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody. Have a great week or two weeks. Absolutely.